A woman wearing headphones sitting at a table. She has a rainbow colored keyboard and a braille display in front of her. Hello everybody. I'm Rania Pahaoja, an accessibility specialist from Epicode. I have studied computer science at the University of Helsinki. In my job in Epicode, I train people about accessibility and do accessibility audits for our customers' websites. Hands, laptop, and braille display. The homepage of Tampere University is displayed on the screen. It's often not possible to tell from outside if a person would benefit from accessibility. In fact, almost everyone benefits from accessibility. Some need it always, others benefit from time to time. We can also say that good accessibility is better usability. We have a few example users here. Hand-drawn pictures of people. Matti moves in wheelchair and checks his mobile phone to see if there is an accessible entrance to the restaurant chosen together with his friends. He doesn't need accessibility in web, but does in built environment. Saga has ADHD and dyslexia. Her attention easily disturbed and to her it's difficult to understand text if there is too much content in the page. Then Irma. She is already old but looks for new craft in interactions from web and talks to her friend. However, Irma's vision is impaired and she does not always manage to click on small icons, icons with the mouth. Niklas is a stay-at-home father whose child often demands attention. Niklas tries to do things in the computer while the child in his arms squirms and tries to escape. The last example user is me, Ronja. Ronja is a blind IT expert who uses a computer with a screen reader and a braille display. If things go well, she can choose a seat on the tray, but if accessibility isn't right, Ronia won't get train tickets. Okay, we can divide the website roughly in three parts, content, development and design. When we make accessible websites, accessibility must be kept on mind in all three parts. From here on, we'll focus on the visual design part. But before then, a few words about WCAG. Web Content Accessibility Guidelines, WCAG is a criteria for accessibility created by the World Wide Web Consortium, W3C. The current official version is 2.1. WCAG contains four basic princi principles and several 
so-called success criterion. Tax, perceivable, operable, understandable, and robust. The criteria are divided into three levels, A, AA, and Dribble A, AAA. WCAG is not perfect, but if we require that something must be accessible, um, there must also be a way to measure accessibility, and for this WCG is just fine. For example, the Finnish law states that certain online service must meet WCAG level double A requirements. In reality, there is no need to know much about WCAG. However, I refer to this WCAG criteria, so you can see a little bit of what kind of things are accepted by the law. Now, let's get to the visual design and CSS. The CSS code is being scrolled on the computer screen. Contrast. One of the most important things related to accessibility of visual design is the contrast of colors. Fortunately for us, in the web, colors are presented numerically and the contrast between two colors can be calculated is, uh, easily. Mm, this is called to contrast ratio. If we have a white background, hex FFF, and black text, has OOO, the contrast ratio is very good. Strictly speaking, 21 to 1. It's acceptable to have lower contrast ratio in large text. For example, change the text to purple and background to light grey. This is okay for large text, but in normal body text we need more contrast. With a contrast checker, we can easily find out which color tone is visible enough. The WCAG criterion says that the contrast ratio should be at least 4.5 to 1. Now it is past the criterion of WCAG level double A, but uh, this is the minimum and uh, higher contrast is usually easier to read. WCAG 2.1, Criterion 1.4.3 So colors are a trivial thing. We know the minimum requirements and then just looking for the color values that meet them. Let's talk about something more interesting. Today, quite a few people surf the web on the phone. The website should also be usable by those. Page content should fit horizontally on the display. Criterion 1.4.10. We can do that for example by using CSS media queries and Flexbox. In the screenshots you can see the same page on displays of different sizes. In the larger the boxes are side by side and in the smaller they are on top of each other. This Example is from the sufficient technologies of WCAG, and you can find a link to it from information of this video. 
in the last part of my video let's talk about enlarging text I mean just text content not the basic page zooming of a browser if you have low vision you might might want to read large, slightly larger text. For example, it is often possible to increase the, the size of text on your phone without having to zoom in on all the content. But if user resizes text, the layout of the page should still be pretty. So not like this there must be a few things in the css to make text resizing work well let's do that now we have here a basic example web page it just looks like it's created by a blind designer in the top bar on the purple background the title the example of resizing text the main content of the page is Laura Mipsum text. On the right side, a quarter of a page wide gray sidebar with text, an image of cartoon monkeys, and a list with circled border. First, to enable resizing text by user, we must set font sizes using relative units like persons, em, or rem. Now you may be thinking, if we use a relative value, what is it relative to? The default font size of browsers is 16 pixels. We will use that by setting the font size for the HTML element to 100%. Also, user can change the default this is the starting point for the font size of the other elements now set the font size to 1.15 em for main content and to 1 em for the paragraphs inside it the font size of the main element is now 1.15 time as larger as the parent HTML element and in the paragraphs the font size is the same as in the main. So the EM unit values are related to the parent element. If there are many nested elements, it can be tricky to understand what size the 1AM really is. So for example, we can take the sidebar and the list inside it. The sidebar is a side element, the rounded box is a div element and the list is UL. We maybe want that the font size of list is the same as in, in the other text in the sidebar. But how to do that if the EM is relative to the parent? We can change the font size from current 1EM to 1 or em in the ul element. In the nested elements the rem could be easier to use. The rem is always relative to the root element, so our html element. The value 1 rem is the same in every element. Now we can test increasing text to 200%. The page title goes outside of the purple area of banner. Didn't succeed perfectly. The height of the header element is 
set statically in pixels. And here was one strong element where the font size was set using pixels. If we fix them, the resizing works better. Criterion 1.4.4 This is of course a very simple page, but I verily urge you to use relative units to set font sizes and the width and height of text containers. That way you can make more accessible web content for many users.